If we look towards the top right of the interface, we see the tab UV and Paint. In here, we're going to be using four sculpting brushes, the Displacement, Soften, Pinch and Inflate. Now to work more efficiently, I'm going to be docking these four brushes into a custom palette to avoid me moving to the top of the screen when we change the brushes. To dock these, we right click on each tool and select Yes to put these into a custom tool palette. We activate the tool palette with this button right here. First, let's look at the displacement brush. So first, we're going to be looking at the displacement brush. And when we activate this brush and the other brushes that we're going to be using, we see some parameters that we can change in the properties. Here we have the size. This is the size of the actual brush. And in Z brush, it's called the draw size. Next is the strength. This is the speed in which the brush applies its effect, in this particular case, displacement. In ZBrush, this is called Z intensity. Next, we have the hardness, which controls how hard or soft the brush's edges appear. In ZBrush, this is called the vocal shift. Next, if we look down here, we can choose an alpha, which is the actual brush shape. Below this, we have two different stroke types, dots, which will scatter the shape if they move too fast. Whereas freehand will keep a continuous stroke. If you move too fast in freehand stroke type, you'll see a blue trend line that will appear like a lazy mouse, you could say, effect. The movement can be quite slow in some particular cases, like for high polygon geometry. We can change the size of the brush by holding down the control and shift key while clicking and moving the mouse left to right. With the same shortcut key while moving the mouse up and down, we can change the strength. It's indicated by the center blue area of the brush. The ring shown in here in red shows the size for the outer ring and the brush hardness, the inner ring. The closer the inner ring comes to the outer ring, the more hard the edge of the brush stroke will be. Now let's look at these features within ZBrush. The displacement brush we use is a standard brush within Hexagon. Also, here's the equivalent brush size, the hardness, and the strength. The stroke type is here, and the alphas are over here. To start sculpting, we set our size, strength, and hardness, then brush over the surface of the geometry. Automatically, as in ZBrush, this pushes the vertices towards a normal of the brush. Holding the shift key does the opposite, it pushes in the vertices. And holding the control key activates the soften tool, which is set up by the parameters of the soft tool itself. So let's look at the soften tool. The soften tool relaxes the mesh by smoothing the vertices. In ZBrush, we hold the shift key to activate this. This is so handy to distribute more evenly the geometry between sculpting. I use this all the time. The pinch brush draws in the vertices together. As we know, this creates a tight pinch effect. Handy for areas like creases of the face between the joints of the fingers. In ZBrush, this acts the same way. The inflate brush expands the geometry in the chosen area by pulling the faces towards their own individual normal direction. This creates a more puffed effect, nice for fingers and certain limbs. If we go to the Vertex Modeling tab and activate the Tweak tool located here, we have the freedom to actually move the faces, the edges, and the vertices. In addition to this, we've got in the Properties a feature called Soft Selection.
When you select on a vertice, for instance, you can see that it's actually selected other vertices, getting darker towards the outside area as less influence. Similar with the other sculpting tools by holding down the Control and Shift key, we can increase or decrease the area of influence. And of course we can actually use the tweak tool as well, as well as these universal manipulator handles. When working in ZBrush, the equivalent tool to the tweak with the soft selection is the actual move tool. The move tool works in a very similar way to the actual tweak and soft selection within Hexagon, but the difference is, is that we can actually work with the Z intensity, which is the strength, and this governs how quick or slow the deformation takes place. A low value and a high value. Hexagon, like most 3D modelers, cannot handle ultra-high polygons, unlike ZBrush, which can, thanks to its pixel technology. This means for basic deformations, with a reasonable polygon count, Hexagon will work fine. But at times, things can slow down, according to what your system is, and what Hexagon can handle. As an example, let's crank up the actual polygon count a few times, just to see the difference between how a ZBrush handles it, and how Hexagon does. So I'm going to apply this to actually show the actual polygon count. But the likelihood is, as you can see now, is that Hexagon will crash. And of course, I have actually put a level 4 of sub D on it. But of course, we are aiming for really high polygon counts in this particular case for high detail sculpting. So this is not going to be too helpful. And yes, level 4 is quite high, even for a mesh like this. So, just heading over into ZBrush quickly, we're going to ramp up the actual polygon count for this. I'm going to go for a sub D level of 5 in this particular case. And we just look over here to see the geometry. Well, it speaks for itself. It's over a million polygons. But you can see with the move tool that it's having no issues whatsoever in moving. We can deform absolutely perfectly. And we can rotate around in the interface as well very easily. Back to Hexagon, it still hasn't recovered and it unlikely will recover. Because Hexagon is not a sculpting application and does not use the pixel technology that ZBrush has. Hexagon can have one advantage over ZBrush in that it has more traditional tool handles and component selection methods. You can't, for instance, select faces or edges in ZBrush, whereas you can in Hexagon. This goes for deformations like Scale, Rotate and Translate. Although ZBrush does have its own equivalent method for these things, they work on the basis of a more generalized area rather than more specific. For instance, we can translate and scale the whole object, or with a mask selection within ZBrush, a part of it. But it's not as precise as Hexagon is. Although we have these binding parameters within Hexagon for the sculpting tools, it appears, at least for me, not to work with a brush sensitivity for my Wacom Intuos 2 tablet. That being said, I don't find that it actually hinders too much performance because I can only really work on medium to low polygon meshes. 
Where sensitivity really is needed is when we're working with high polygon meshes, we need to add subtle details. That being said, within Hexagon I can make deformations for morph targets and things like that. But of course it would be nice if it actually worked with my Wacom tablet with this sensitivity. Of course, when we're actually comparing with ZBrush, we're talking about two entirely different applications. ZBrush is a very expensive application in comparison to Hexagon, and ZBrush is not a traditional 3D modeling application like Hexagon. It's more directed at sculpting with sculpting pixel technology. So as far as pen and tablet settings go, it would have been nice as I mentioned, but for me at least it doesn't work within Hexagon. In Hexagon, we can view our cage meshes and sub D meshes by activating the display smooth control shape from the display menu. This shows a direct comparison between how the smoothed and unsmoothed meshes look. At times, this can be quite hard to see when we do bigger changes. Now in ZBrush, we can sculpt on a high polygon smooth mesh and later force the cage version from any level the sub D applied. So just doing a bit of sculpting here, we can see when we apply the cage that is actually pushing the detail up into the low polygon geometry. Layers within ZBrush are so handy when we have the ability to experiment without losing the original mesh. We can even adjust the intensity of the sculpting level for that layer. Unfortunately we have no such control within Hexagon, so what I do is duplicate the mesh at different stages as I go. Of course we need to delete some of these meshes as we go because at some point you will overload Hexagon. Another thing that you may find handy within ZBrush that's not within Hexagon is the ability to actually animate the morphs. So you can check them before you even take them outside ZBrush. So that's it for this particular video and I hope you enjoyed it and found more about the sculpting within Hexagon.